I'm David Yusui Bloomquist, and I play mid lane for Equifox Academy. I'm from San Rafael. It's a smaller city that's about 30 minutes north of San Francisco, uh, so Northern California. When I was a younger kid, um, six or seven years old, I started to play computer games like Carmen San Diego and like these weird puzzle games that were designed for kids. Uh, and I was always pretty good at them, and it was fun. I ended up finding out about you know, online multiplayer games. I think the first ones I played were like Neopets and uh, Maple Story, which ended up being a pretty big one for a lot of people. My first like really competitive game I would say was World of Warcraft. Uh, I really liked playing that game when I was in middle school. I played a lot of Arena and got competitive, um, made a lot of good friends. I didn't start playing League at all until freshman year of high school when one of my friends was like, oh hey, this game is like World of Warcraft PvP, but you don't have to do any of the grinding, the leveling, like that sort of thing. At first, I was thrown off by it because it was the first game I'd ever played, first MOBA, uh, like 2D, you right click to move your character. Like I was thrown off completely. I really didn't like it. I ended up like sticking through it and I got better and then once you get better at a game, it obviously becomes more fun, so. I played a lot of League all throughout high school. Um, I, for the first six months, maybe a year, I didn't even play ranked. I just played normal games. I felt like I was improving pretty quickly, so I ended up jumping into ranked, and then they reset the season, and then I played ranked like all throughout season three. That was when I got significantly better, um, and then I started playing pro in season four. I know before I ever played on like, a paid team, I would play with various pickup teams. Uh, I know I once played with Mayri in one of these. We would just play in like, uh, smaller tournaments that usually had RP cash prizes, like go for lol. Playing in those tournaments, I realized like, oh, playing competitive is really fun. And, and people started to recognize me because uh, at the same time I was climbing solo queue. Uh, and that's when I ended up playing for lol pro, which was an off brand of Curse, which is now Team Liquid. Um, so the guy paying me was Steve. So that team was really fun. I, that was the first time I was ever on a team that actually got a salary and played in a lot of different tournaments. We never ended up making anything out of it. Like we, I think we got really close to qualifying for uh, Challenger Series. The team ended up like fizzling out. I had like a pretty decent word of mouth reputation. They're like, People hyping me up, oh, this 16-year-old kid is really good in Challenger. He should be on a pro team. Uh, and I ended up trying out for Cloud9's uh, amateur team, uh, Cloud9 Tempest. It was a disaster because our supports on the team at the time did not patch his Tournament Realm client. And we ended up using our coach as a substitute ringer. And we got banned for a split and it was just an absolute disaster, um, and it was not the best environment to be in. Uh, so I ended up getting pretty burned out. And at the end of that experience, so we, we ended up losing our third place match. We didn't get to play in um, LCS relegation tournaments. After that, I was just like, well, I don't think pro league is what I want to do. Because that experience really skewed my opinion of what it even looked like. I ended up just going back into my senior year of high school, just saying, I'm not gonna play league. This is a waste of time. I'm just gonna focus on like getting really good grades first semester, applying to college. So that's what I ended up doing. I guess college, it's hard to differentiate yourself. Uh, and I noticed right away, like in the back of my head, like, oh, why didn't I play pro league? It was going so well for me. I like was really skilled at something. And I didn't want to end up just having uh, the same experience everyone else has with like 
going to college, getting a desk job for the first five years out of college or something. Um, and so I decided that, okay, I'm gonna start playing league again, see if I'm still good. I wasn't at first, I was actually kind of bad. Um, I remember I played towards the end of season six. I'd only been playing for a couple months again, but everything felt a little off. I wasn't terrible, but I was not able to get back into Challenger, so I was like, mm, this is not looking too hot, but I still uh, stuck with it. And then the next uh, semester of school and the next season, season seven, I was just playing a lot. Um, and it ended up taking me, I think, about six months to get back into it, get back into Challenger. Eventually, uh, the whole Tanner DeMonte situation happened for Echo Fox. So they needed to find an immediate replacement. Um, and they looked at the soul key ladder and I was like, oh, this guy's top 10. Uh, and Tanner thought pretty highly of me because I had played with him in some in-houses. That's how it happened, I guess. Uh, Echo Fox picked me up for their academy team. Wanted to take this fight, he gets the stopwatch down. Phil's gonna look for this. Winds of War on to Prismal. Stays alive and he's got Sligo for help on the top side. Fragus now it's one, Dewey. two shots. Zui, no Luke, getting excited rather. A few shots out of Prismal. One more, he can't get it. The staff just missing to the left side. There's the speed up. The kill coming in from Yasui as well as they finish Prismal down. Zui on a solo mission. He oh, goes oh, in. Oh. There's one kill. The second one as he turns around for the Haymaker. And a third as they're just falling at his feet. It was a long series but we toughed it out and I'm really grateful for my teammates and I think we all played really well. So the two people I lived with before college, uh, my mom and sister, they're both really supportive. I'd say my mom is kind of cautiously supportive. Uh, that's how I would describe it. In her mind, she wants me to have options, um, which is the right mentality. Um, so she never wanted me to like drop out of school or close off the door uh, to go back to school, um, which is why right now I'm just on a leave of absence. For me personally, it's like I don't see myself doing school right now at all. So I'm just kind of trying to see how far I can go with leave. Us. We got the slows, bro. Oh my! Oh my! <laughs> oh, it's over. I used to think more about the five, ten years down the line kind of thing, um, like how far I could take esports. Oh, I'll be a player for five years, and then I'll be a coach. I'll write a book or something like that. I decided it was all pointless thinking. <laughs> I I know that. Um, People like to plan ahead for careers. I mean, it makes sense, right? You want to know what you're getting yourself into ahead of time, uh, where it's leading to. But I think for esports in general, it's super dynamic. Um, it can change on a whim for anybody, no matter how good you are, how bad you are um, as a player. Um, there is value in planning ahead, but I think that as a competitor, you want to just stay in the moment because it'll lead to you being less anxious and um, just more focused on an immediate goal. I came in really wanting to do well this split and for me especially because my contract expires at the end of the year there's going to be some recency bias so however I do in summer is going to impact my options moving into next year. Um, I think I did pretty well this split and I just want to carry the momentum over to summer and try to get first, try to win. I think I've grown a lot as a player since last summer, since Agobox picked me up and I think that I'm definitely ready to play LCS. <laughs>